Oh, hey. I just tying my shoe. Think about going for a walk. Want to join me? All right. Good walk. So let's talk about expectations. Something I was thinking about some time ago was about how comfort zones um, happen. How we get into a, a, a position where we feel comfortable, even though it might not necessarily be comfortable. And I was trying to figure that out in my head. And so this is a little bit philosophy or theory on my part, but it might be useful. Different perspective, perhaps, for you. Um, so let's see. I think that whether things happen in a good way or a bad way, subjective, but in good or bad things happen, depending on whether or not we expected it will determine how we respond to it. And so I'll give you an example. Let's say I just started a job and my previous work history is that I start a job, it doesn't work out, and I end up either quitting or getting fired within a few days. So my expectation is this isn't going to last long. This job is not going to work out. I'll be gone in a week. That's my expectation going into it. Now, what if a few days into it, I am approached by the boss and they say, hey, you're doing really well. We want to give you a, a quick raise and we like having you here. If my expectation was that I'm going to get fired or end up quitting because it's not going to work out, this might not feel comfortable to me. I might become suspicious of it. And it will, and it's because it's not what I'm expecting, it's not part of my comfort zone. It's not part of my conditioned comfort zone. And so I might be suspicious of it, start to get paranoid and think, what are they up to? What are they trying to pull? And I might, be, might not be as happy as I could otherwise. Um, so that's one possible scenario. Another possible scenario is I start a job and I've always been, uh, always had really good success. I, you know, maybe this is a third job I've ever had because I, I stay there for years and years and it goes well, people like me and I excel at my position. And so I start the job, a few days into it, they come to me and say, you know what, this is just, isn't working out, you're still in your probation period, we're gonna let you go. That's gonna be shocking to me because it's completely outside of my expectation. And so it's not gonna feel comfortable because I was expecting to stay there. It's gonna be a big shock, but that makes sense, right? So in the first scenario where things, go, things seem to be going well from an external perspective, but I'm not comfortable with it, that, that doesn't seem right. But in the case where it doesn't go well and then I don't feel right about it, that makes sense. So let's go into some other scenarios here. Back to the first situation where I have had a rough work history leaving jobs or getting fired early on after hiring and expecting that th this job isn't going to last. So in this scenario, three or four days into it, they come to me and they say, this isn't working out. We're going to let you go. And I go, yeah, that makes sense because that's what happens every job I have. I might say out loud, well, you're a jerk and I hate you and I'm going to burn this place down. But in my mind or somewhere, maybe subconsciously, I'm thinking, yes, this feels right. This is what happens. Everything is good in the world because my expectation has been fulfilled. And then the last scenario would be me as the guy who has had success with working, usually gets the raise or, or stays there a long time. And a couple days in after uh, into the new job, they come to me and say, we've decided to give you a raise, right? Because in the first scenario with this guy, I was saying that he gets fired and it's uncomfortable and that's to be expected. Okay, so in this one, so they, they say, hey, we're going to give you a raise. And it makes perfect sense. And it was what he was expecting. And so he's happy and he's comfortable. And it, and it makes sense that he's comfortable because uh, the social external part of it, it, it is, well, you got to raise and that would make you happy. So you're happy. Um, where am I going with this? Okay. So I guess the point being that sometimes even though from an outside perspective, it looks like it should be one way or another based on the person's expectations, their response could be entirely different. I don't think I set that up right with my examples, but those are the four examples. Those are the four conditions. I got like a grid thing, a matrix grid going on. Um, but I don't know. I feel like I didn't present it well, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to run with it. So th 
the the whole the point is that depending on our expectations we might feel comfortable in an uncomfortable position or uncomfortable in a comfortable position and so um, if I'm expecting to be fired and then I'm not I might be uncomfortable and I start to be suspicious if I'm expecting to not be fired and then I am I'm gonna be uncomfortable and that would make sense but you know because I guess we can all relate to it but I'm, I'm suggesting that it's because the expectation isn't met not that the, the job didn't work out but that the expectation wasn't met I don't know maybe that maybe that element doesn't fit so this is why I like to talk about things because I find that I, I discover more about what I understand and what I think as I'm saying it out loud and I'm talking to somebody having a conversation so I think this is there's a lot of value in doing that um, I've talked about this before with people but it's different when you don't have someone giving you instant feedback um, and you're just talking to a thing a camera thing so where are we at so if you expect something to go wrong and it does you're comfortable even though that doesn't seem right if you expect something to go right and it does you're comfortable and that does seem right so how do we use this awareness or understanding to improve the quality of our lives stop having expectations well that would be one way to do it and some people say that that's that's the way to go if you let go of your expectations you let go of failure because if you don't expect anything to happen then when nothing happens there's no harm um, it just didn't happen and so on on a level I, I I think that that I think there's something there that we can work with um, so maybe not so much that we just have no expectations because that that makes you sound like you're listless and lazy and and no purpose no drive in life and that's I don't think that's the same thing um, so again a lot of this stuff is semantics it's about how the how the words work and I've, I've been saying this recently a lot that the English language just doesn't seem adequate um, and maybe that's my understanding of it like, I don't have enough vocabulary to get the job done um, and I guess that's on me or anybody else I don't know school I blame school but like the word love I know other languages have multiple words for love for the expression of uh, care and affirmation stuff like that. I guess we do too in English but we don't commonly use them you say I love ice cream I love my family I love baseball then so the feeling probably isn't the same for each of those things but we use the same word for it and so the same things going on here maybe with expectations or just in general it's just a side note thing that wanted to say um, so, but maybe when I say expectations it means different things to different people or even to me it means different things but I suppose if let me see I don't know I'll, I'll scatter now another element of the comfortable and uncomfortable places though I think you know, where, probably where this this thought process started years ago starting out in, as a counselor and, and talking to people who were in the early stages of uh, overcoming identifying and overcoming addiction maybe not identifying they were aware of it existing but admitting acknowledging it and uh, and starting to work on overcoming it um, it learning about how people would spend all day long chasing the next high sometimes they, they didn't they are you know maybe not you know well there was the element of having to get the money find the person who had it and then get it and then find somewhere to use it and all that whatever so it was it was a time-consuming process it can be a time-consuming process and you'd think you know it's then like the argument of people who don't understand that and, and come in and say well why would you want to do that why would you want to spend your life that way as if they want to spend their life that way um, and then they say well why don't you just go and do whatever you need to do to get over it why don't you go to rehab why don't you go to a treatment why, why, why don't you just do the things that you need to do to get past that behavior pattern and that's, that's short-sighted and missing the mark on it um, and taking not accounting for a lot of factors that go into it the person probably does want to have a more comfortable life um, but perhaps their expectations don't allow for that they don't expect they don't um, they can't imagine themselves having a more comfortable life or they can't imagine themselves um, or they don't they can't under, they can't imagine the process it would take to get there or they don't have any expectations for themselves whether because of feelings of low self-worth or low feelings of self-worth however you want to say that um, depression anxiety trauma PTSD whatever the whatever the situation is for the individual they're having a difficult time seeing that as a possibility they don't they can't see they don't have any expectation that things will improve because their past experience has been that it's not going to or, or from if you look just from their experience the pattern that they've experienced has been that things 
aren't getting better, that things are staying the same. Now this is quickly getting out of my control because I'm I want to go off on several different tangents here and try and maintain some integrity to the topic. Um, so you would think that someone in that situation is so uncomfortable that they'd want to get out of it. But what I'm saying is that their expectations being what they are, whatever they are, uh, is that to stay in that situation is actually more comfortable than moving to get out of it. Don't well, think about yourself. Is there anything that you would like to do differently in your life? Why don't you do it? I'm waiting for the answer. Tell me. All right, never mind. I can't hear you. Um, for me, I want to exercise more. I want to exercise every day. Why don't I do it? Because it's uncomfortable. I get and I go through spells of it. I'll go for a couple weeks at a time. I've fallen off again. Recently, I was going well from November to Christmas, and Christmas, I was, eh, whatever. Uh, and then I think I've exercised my little routine twice since then. And that's a couple weeks into January now. But I did today. So I'm trying to get back on that pattern. But why don't I do it? Why am I not doing it every day? It's, uh, it's what I want to do. It, that's the I, would, I think I would feel better if I did, but I don't do it. Uh, I stay in my non-exercising routine because it's more comfortable. It's not my it's not my preference, but it's more comfortable, so I stay. So I think that's, there's an element of uh, expectations that works against us in in that regard, maybe, or is that for me? I don't know. Um, all right. So one other another angle of this expectation topic is. Um, our expectations determine where we're going to go in the future, what we think our capacity is. If every day of the last 10 years of my life has been, have been difficult, I've dealt with stress and struggle and anxiety and depression and frustration and drama, then why would I expect anything different to, to, to happen today? You know, go back to the thoughts, to choices, to behaviors, to personality, to personal reality. If we're thinking, like Joe Dispenza says, if we're thinking 90% of the same things from day to day, why would we expect our behaviors to be any different? If we're thinking the same things, we have to change our thoughts. If our experience has been one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, same routine every day, then why would it be any different? Why would our expectations be any different? So if I'm getting high every day, dealing with an addiction, I'm, I'm experiencing the addiction, engaging in the, the addiction every day, why would I expect to be different today? It starts with a thought. I decide I'm done with this. I never want to do it again. I'm not going to do it again. I wake up that morning. I'm done. I, I did it yesterday. I'm never going to do it again. But by the end of the day, I've done it. Why? Because I haven't. Because my thoughts precede my actions, and it takes some time to practice to get your thoughts to actually trigger new actions. And so, relying on my previous experience. My expectation today is that I'm going to do the same thing. And so when I start to change my mind, that's the, that's the beginning of it, but it takes some time to engage that, to really lock it in um, and to filter, maybe to, to filter down, right? And so I, I stick with the same thing. So if every day in the last 10 years has been difficult, why would today be any different? So this, all right, now I'm, I'm going in two different directions here. So you think about why wouldn't somebody change? Well, because they enter into today and go, well, I, Today, yesterday was difficult. Today is going to be difficult too. Tomorrow will be difficult as well. I think that's the, that's what I want to get to. That's the big part is is the future. Addiction makes us focus on the past like a big lumbering animal, followed, chained to us, and always over our shoulder. We're terrified of it, and the future is some far off distant thing we can't even conceive of. I'm looking at the middle of the iPad. I got to look at the top corner where the camera is. Look at the camera. That's my catchphrase. I'm going to get a T-shirt someday to be a outline image of me. Look at the camera. I don't know. That'd be a good one. Not as good as LA Beasts. Have a good day, but in its own. I just I like LA Beast. If you haven't watched him, he's entertaining. He's had a new video this morning, so it's on my mind. Um, distraction. All right. So if so if if every day has been rough, my expectation is that every day is going to be rough. So then I figure, what's the point of trying today? And I think that gets that's one of the ways the expectations break us down as well. And and so I'm sitting here today going, well, I'd like to not do this behavior anymore, but tomorrow's going to be difficult. Yesterday was, so I might as well do it today. And um, and then so I do it today, and then tomorrow ends up being difficult because I did the thing yesterday that I didn't want to do. So that's where the change has to occur. The expectation has to change that we can't. Well, 
if, if we continue to base our future expectations, our future looking, uh, our expectations for the future, if we base that on our past experiences, then we're gonna repeat the same past experiences. Stop recovering, start living. Stop focusing on what you don't want, focus on what you do want. And so that's where the shift has to take place with the expectations. If you wanna have expectations, great expectations, um, the book and the song, I like the song better than the book. If you wanna have great expectations, then you have to start thinking differently. You have to imagine a different future than what your past would predict. And if you can do that, then you can start to change the outcome in the future by living differently or thinking differently today, not based on your previous expectations. So that sounds great, right? All I do is start imagining it, but why doesn't that, why is that so difficult to engage? It because, like I said, going away from our expectations, when our expectations aren't met, it becomes uncomfortable, even if it's in a good way. So I start to imagine myself a future where I'm no longer engaged in the addiction behavior. And then I start to act in a way that I'm no longer engaged in the addiction behavior. But then that feels uncomfortable because it's outside of my comfort zone. It's not what I'm used to doing. It's breaking my routine. Why does it feel uncomfortable? I don't fully understand that. Something to do with the brain, okay? But I don't know. Um, I can speculate and stuff, but I don't speculate. Okay, so you, you feel uncomfortable. So then you start to slip back. You start to re resolve to participate in the, the same old routines because that feels more comfortable, even though on its face, it's not comfortable. You're living in, in, in difficult situations. You don't have enough resources. Your needs aren't met, but something about the elements of it are routine and that feels comfortable to the brain. So it's really, it's, it's a crazy scenario that, and this is all conditioning. When we get ourselves conditioned into something, it's more comfortable to stay in the conditioning than it is to break the conditioning. And so you look at someone and say, well, why don't you just stop doing that? It's harming you. It's not that easy. There's so many factors that go into it. It's something that's autopilot. Why don't you just stop breathing? Why don't you just stop driving a car? Why don't you just stop making dinner for yourself every night? You know, some of these things we have to do. Some of these things we just do automatically. Sometimes some of these things you can't really, we don't, we don't think about, and it's just part of our routine. And you think, well, why should I stop driving a car? It's not the same as an addiction. No, it's not the same as an addiction, but the mental process, the rote behavior, the conditioning, I think is similar. I think it's worth pointing out. I don't know. That's all my thoughts on this one. I think that if I were to cut this down into segments, rearrange it, or to listen to this, write it all down, and then write it into a script, I could present it in a much clearer way, but I'm not gonna do that because this is what I'm presenting. This is myself. So far, I've been sharing these videos with some people and getting some feedback asking for asking for feedback and um, some of that is that I could make a more polished video and I've said it I think already in here and um, maybe I should by some standards but by my standard I don't want to and I'm not going to because this is who I am this is my personality this is how I present information and it's either going to be something that you find uh, appealing or not and that's okay and I'm not looking for anybody to find this appealing and if you don't find it appealing it doesn't hurt me in any way and I don't want you to watch it. You don't need to watch it. It's your choice. So if the information is valuable, but you can't stand my presentation of it, there's other people that you can find who are going to present it in a better way. If the information is useless to you, and but you like the presentation, well, then good. You're entertained. Um, and so somewhere in there, there, there's a balance that even if it's one person or nobody in the whole world finds that this is the right format and the right material, if one person, great. If 100, great. If nobody, that's okay. I still enjoy doing it. So that's where I'm at with that, just being um, true to what I want to do. But I hope that somebody finds this information uh, at least thought-provoking, if not entertaining in some way, um, or inspiring or reassuring or supportive. But that's, that's the reason why I'm not making any greater efforts in the, uh, the video editing process. And the reason I keep mentioning that, and I'll stop mentioning it at some point, is uh, my fear my fear of being rejected and, and that's just the straight up transparent truth i have my, my friend said it this way the other day in reference to something deeply entrenched uh fear-based conditioning and that's what all of us are going on that's the, that would be a good video to do um, what is that and why is that um, but that's what it is i don't want to be rejected and so i feel self-conscious about 
presenting myself in this way that doesn't look as polished as all the other things I'm seeing on YouTube. But that's not my style. For me to do it that way, I would feel uncomfortable because uh, it would be outside of um, yeah, it's outside my comfort zone, so I feel uncomfortable. But it's it would be inauthentic, and that would make me uncomfortable. So I don't want to be inauthentic. So um, it might make it more difficult to listen to or watch. But I'm going for authenticity here. That's it. Um, I guess it's time to walk back. So I don't even come with me. All right. And we're back, and I'm not watching the front side of the camera video thing, so I have no idea if I'm in frame. I feel like I should go like this, but who knows? Maybe I'm okay here. But I'm done with this anyway, so I'm going to turn it off. Um, here's my shirt. Stop recovering. Start living. I got more shirts in the description if you're interested with other logos and such. But I hate to be a shill for products, but I'm going to be in like that. Anyway, I'll catch you next time.